Welcome to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. Featuring advice and interviews about athlete branding. Learn how marketing, public relations, and broadcasting can grow your brand. We also have special episodes to talk about recent news, events, and anything in the world of sports. The podcast is sponsored by Pliable, a versatile marketing, PR, and broadcasting company that identifies opportunities and creates tailored content for its clients. Now it's time to roll. Here's your host, Greg Glenn. Thanks and welcome to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. In this episode, we're talking about positivity. Today's guest is Neil Rogers. And Neil, for over three decades, has built a successful career in sales and marketing, working with clients in a wide range of verticals, including pharmaceutical, biomedical, manufacturing, logistics, financial services, and government defense contractors. He is the owner and VP of marketing and sales at Rogers Marketing, winner of several multi-million dollar sales awards, the Velocity Award for Growth, and Heavy Hitter Awards for Large Accounts. He's amazing. He's got a lot of things to talk about, including his book that we're going to get into, which is called, by the way, Everything I Needed to Know in Sales, I Learned Behind the Bar. So I think this is going to be a great episode, Neil, and appreciate you joining us. Welcome to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. Greg, great to be here. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Absolutely. And as we get started here today, I always start with guests uh, talking about kind of how you got into the position you are today. A lot of the athletes I work with, they're called pliable athletes because they adjust along the way and the career never goes in a, in a straight path and uh, wanted to kind of get your thoughts on how you ended up where you are today. Well, we've got we've got we've got quite a uh, quite a path we went on, Greg. Uh, <laughs> uh, so my uh, my initial five, I'm the seventh of eight of a of an Irish Catholic family, and uh, by the time the seventh rolls around, you know everybody's a little tired, and uh, the other ones have taken them to task. And uh, the uh, uh, in my senior year in high school, I was an average student, and in my senior year in high school in May, I went to my mother is there something I should be doing next year? <laughs> so it's not like it is today, right? right where, yeah. we, where we've mapped our kids' uh, lives out from DNA right up until the moment, right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you might want to go to school. Okay, well, I'll give school a try. And where am I going to go? And so I hooked on to a community college and that didn't go well. Uh, I lacked, I think I, in retrospect, I think I lacked interest, passion, didn't really have a, 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 a direction. And uh, so... Um, so I, 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 I did reasonably well the first semester and the second semester, I just, I checked out, right. All the while I had been working in the hospitality business. So, you know, working, uh, in the kitchen, uh, washing dishes, bus boy doing that stuff. And then I got, uh, I got out to the, behind the bar as a bar back and it, should, it really should be called back break because it's back breaking work. Right, yeah. And so, um, and, uh, I I saw how the bartenders worked. I said, "Geez, that looks pretty cool. I want to try that. I want to get. I want to. I want to do that." So, having failed in school and not really self esteem, not going, not going all that well, I uh, uh, or at its highest point, I I decided to set my sights on getting a bar job. I had no experience other than a friend of mine and I were both feeling the same way. So we started to do private parties, which is different than doing a you know a packed bar. Right. Yeah. So I went to, uh, I knew a guy that was going to be running a place in my uh, my summer town called White Horse Beach in Plymouth, Mass. And he, uh, I went into him and I, I asked him, I said, you know, could I, could I, could I, run, could I, could I have a bar job? He said, well, all, it was a small place. There was only three jobs. And he gave, he said, but I, I can't give you one, but I can give you five nights on the door. So checking IDs. Oh. Now I'm back getting ice, taking trash out, all the stuff I was doing as a bar back. When just then, the girl on the day didn't want, want the job anymore, the bar job. She says, do you want that job? I said, sure, that'd be great. And so uh, so I, I went along, got some instruction from him on how to look good doing it, what things to do, drinks that you should know, whatnot. And the first drink I poured was a sea breeze, which isn't as popular today, but it's a it's a vodka 
grapefruit with a splash of cranberry and a lime. So I pour the drink, put it down on the nice oak bar that we had. The woman takes a sip out of it. She goes, that's pretty good. So now I had this immediate feedback and I got, whoa, maybe I could be good at this. You know, so now I'm like, it's an ah, it's, it's the ah, one of the aha moments that I put in the book. Well, and the other thing, too, is as somebody who had struggled a bit in school, you were probably looking for some confidence that you could do something right. Right. Correct. That's yeah. exactly what it was. So it's like and um, so I the um, so I decided that, you know, I'll work this and see how it goes. And I started now I'm now I'm shucking and jiving. I've got, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm working the bar and, you know, I, I, I'm i blessed with quick hands so I could. You know, I poured really fast and I can serve people well. And then, of course, I used my interpersonal skills. Right. I had those. Yeah. Those, those, the, those were an academic intelligence. That was the interpersonal intelligence. Right. Yes. And so I uh, and and I, I I just started working it, introducing people. Hey, you should you you should meet this. But hey, would you like to play a game of darts? These people love darts. Why don't you play uh, whatever that may be? So I'm just yeah. coordinating that. And then I decided to um, though this is going to be my path now hotel so restaurant restaurants and i went so i decided i'm going to go to hotel restaurant school that didn't work out too well either <laughs> okay so i uh I, let's just say i was i wasn't focused right and so uh i uh, and i also realized that i didn't want to want to work restaurants for the rest of my life but you know it, it really came to a you know um, on top of it, I didn't want to work Saturdays and Sunday, Friday, Saturday nights for the rest of my life. And uh, so I, now I've got to find a path. So people would say, geez, you know, Neil, with your with your personality and your interpersonal skills, I bet your sales is a good place for you. I said, okay. So now I got now I still got to get that degree, right? Yeah. <laughs> I go back again. But however, the difference this time for your your athletes is I now had a focus, I had a purpose, and I had a desire. And so I I wound up, uh, I went back to a, another, yet my third community college, and I realized the the process, the algorithm, if you will, in today's parlance. Yeah, yeah, there you go, that's a good keyword, yeah. As to how, uh, how I'm going to get good at this. You know, they like you to show up and go to class. Mm-hmm. You might want to listen, actively listen. You might want to take copious notes. Ask questions if you don't know. Go to the office hours. Do the extra work. So now you're sitting on that A minus B plus routine. You get the A minus because you're getting the benefit of the doubt. Neil tries really hard. He shows up. He does all the right things. You know, he's, he participates in class and all that. So I went from a flunked out student to 385. Wow. And so, um, and uh, I can't remember a damn thing I learned. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole nother kettle of, but what I did learn is how I learned. Right. Exactly. The focus, the purpose, the desire. And that's what I think a lot of these athletes have that I work with right now. And that's why they're successful already and why I know they're going to be successful in the future. And I always encourage athletes to try to find that burning desire. What do you do really well so that you can go and have that as your passion so that whatever you do, you're going to be really good at it because you want it more. Correct. Yep. And so they love, they, the, they, they love the athletes out there. Of course they do because they're hardworking, they're dedicated, and they're reliable. You can't find that anymore, Neil. Right. Yeah. And so, and that's why, you know, if you, if, if you look, if I if I look at the book in the same fashion, you know, these these lessons they learned as athletes, I learned in the hospitality business or some of them. Right. right. Yep. Um, you know, I didn't have to get up at five o'clock in the morning for swim practice. Right. right. <laughs> but um, but I uh, but yeah, I mean, the importance of a proper greeting. Yep. Right. Handshake. Right. Good. To say hello. Yeah. Right. Eye contact. Smile. Mm-hmm. Back again, actively listen, lean in, show you're interested, listen to what they have to say. Dale Carnegie said it best, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody wants to tell their own story. Let them tell it, right? Time management, you know, show up 15 minutes early is on time, right? I learned and, that from my baseball coach in high school. <laughs> um, 
organizational skills. Mm -hmm. How are you showing up? How are you preparing? Yeah. Right. Um, so all these things, what's your attitude? What's your aptitude? What's your ability? Yeah, let's talk about that because that's another thing where you've had success in your career is kind of the importance of positivity. Um, and then you've also uh, worked with your wife, Lori. You're the creators and owners of the Positive Activity Process. And mm -hmm. I know throughout your life, you've started to realize the impact of positivity and what it can do for someone. And I think that's so important to mention on the podcast because I'm one of those people. I will always see the glass half full. And I was reading through some of your materials where, you know, positive people are more productive, positive people have a better outlook on life, things like that. In my mind, especially when you relate that to your name, image and likeness, it's how you show up. It's your optimism. It's are you do you believe you can do this? Do you want to do this? whatever it may be in your life. And I think that if you could just speak to the importance of positivity and how that does change somebody's mindset, because a lot of these athletes now are growing up with the importance of mental health, mindset, the brain is a powerful tool in addition to the weights you might be lifting and the training you may be doing. So positive activity was, again, one of those things that we've been doing all along, but didn't really notice, right? It wasn't like, you know, it was like, it was, it was, uh, you know, I remember back in my, in, back in my food sales days, I just put, I would put, you know, you're, you're going out, I'm a new guy. I'm, I'm, I'm getting beat up on the road. I'm going in and seeing every chef and uh, restaurant manager in, in, in the Boston area. And uh, they don't want to, they don't want to see me. Right. <laughs> but you keep showing up, you keep being nice, you drop off the stuff, you don't intrude, do these things, but you're not getting the business yet. But you know, but I, but I, I, something in me told me that if I stay at it and I keep, I keep the right attitude and don't get in, you know, just, just continue to basically bartend on the road, right? Yeah. It would, it would work out. And what I would do, again, no, no Tony Robbins coaching. Yeah. I had on my dashboard, stay on the road. It's just getting started. It'll work out. We have a thing now. It's interesting. My wife and I in our in our um, in our dashboard, it's uh, where the 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 reflection in the into the um, uh, windshield of this of this sticker says things are always working out for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. things are always going to work. There's, there's plenty for everybody, you know, just stay at it. And so that's what we did in that. Might I recommend, I mean, I'm here to recommend my book. Absolutely, go for it, yeah. <laughs> Bar Tips, but might I recommend to your to your athletes to, to read Bar Tips, but also read The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acorn. It's a quick read. Uh, he has a fantastic TED Talk um, you know, that uh, he, he is... He studied happiness and positivity at Harvard for uh, a dozen years, wow. and it's yeah. and it's it's a phenomenal book. We glean a lot, glean a lot of that from that. And so, the positive activity, the actual. So, when we looked at in two thousand and eight, you you might remember yeah. things weren't all that great, right? Yeah. And how are we going to pay? You know, we're independent business people, small business people. Yes, we're successful, but there are times when the marketing budgets get cut, you know, and there's there's nowhere to go. How are we going to pay the bills? And so my wife, and, and at the same time, for your athletes, my daughter was a Division One lacrosse player at Boston University. Okay. In 2000, and, uh, and in 2010, she had a career-ending head injury. Oh. So she she got, she um, she was injured on October 4th and drove again in July. Wow. She spent her natural senior year home with us in post-concussion syndrome. But they went, both her and my wife went to this local fair of a lot of um, mindful behavior people, right? Just that, uh, and they and they met so many people and learned so much about your mindset and how to how to how to how to remain positive, even in the you know the 
the dire straits my daughter was in. I mean, she literally, she actually re listened, she couldn't read it, listened to the book by um, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. Mm. And that helped her through her concussion because she didn't worry about the past or didn't, you know, didn't, and didn't, and wasn't concerned about the future. She, it was a present, it was a present day living in the present moment deal. And so all this stuff, we pieced it together and whatnot. And when we, when we, we, I had been working this same business development process for years. And then my wife developed, Lori developed this, these five or six things to do before you open up your email, your inbox in the morning, right? So, and so positive activity is a kind of a marriage of those two things. So it could be the positivity, but whatever activity after that is, you know, whatever, you know, it's athletics or it's business, it's account, whatever it may be. And so, uh, but the ditty that goes with positive activity is positive activity is a practice, right? Because we're yogis. Yeah. <laughs> my wife and I yeah. practice because nothing's a perfect mm -hmm. of getting your mindset right in a place of positivity, which leads you to a space of open minded, divergent thinking, creativity. You only see solutions. Right. You don't see problems. Right. And then whatever your next steps are, whatever you're looking to do, in our case, I use my business development uh, a, a pro program, which is about a seven step program, which is included in positive activity um, to uh, these certain practices that we do every day. So uh, to develop business. So your things that things like meditation, five minutes of meditation. So in the positive, the positive stuff, five minutes of meditation in the morning, um, get move your body not a problem for athletes, but, but for, for, for other people get out and do something, uh, random acts of kindness, sit down for a moment athletes and think about all the good things your parents have done for you and write them down as an example, yeah. or what, what you did great. What, what, what aspect of your day in the last 24 hours was good. And these are all things that they'll find from, from, from reading, um, happiness advantage. Right. Um, yeah. But but all these things put together. Now, what I say is in in is that you you do this for 90 days. So in our process, so when we talk about business development. So in our small little small company, we had a a uh, one of our clients implode on us last year. We didn't lose them. They just went from went up public at seventeen dollars in July. And in January, they were trading in the cents. Okay. So they just went away. Right. right? Yeah. So it was a million dollar client. Well, in our business, million dollar clients don't just roll up every day. Right. So now we're back in. Now, you know, we're 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 at an advanced stage in our lives and we don't have to worry about paying for colleges anymore and all that stuff. But we still like the business and we like the income. We want to keep it going. Yeah. So we go back into our process. And the process is I did what business are you in? Who can buy what you sell? You know, so your avatar. Yep. In today's parlance. And so uh, we don't use those big words in, in our my book. My book's plain talk. It's 13, 13, 5, 13.5 font. So yeah, there you go. I, I basically wrote a book I could read. Right. Yeah. So you've now so now you've determined what, what you can uh, who can buy what you sell. You've got a list of those people. Now in our case, we only go after referred clients or you know, we'll at this stage of our, our career, because we've got so much of a track record and we have so we we've worked with and helped so many people we can ask them hey do you know this person can we send them so and then we put them in our 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 campaigns we've got a systematic campaign campaign process which is you know we're in the swag business so we we send them a, a promo kit we send them and then we send them samples every month so if we believe that there's someone that can work with us and that we can help Right, we can actually provide service. Then we we keep them in we keep them in queue and, and and whatnot. And then over time, the same way I did in the sport in the in the apparel business, the same way I did when I was in the in the athletic apparel and footwear business, you just keep showing up. 
yeah. you keep showing up and you 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 and you do things this is this is what i think uh that are that would be great for your your athletes is so there's there's persistence and there's tenacity okay we're tenacious persistence sounds like pest for a reason right so as an example a um a telemarketer, they're persistent mm-hmm. and they're pesty, right? Yeah. Nike is tenacious, right? They yeah. find different ways to market to you, to whatnot. And the same thing can be done on a micro marketing um, situation, which is what we're proponents of in the process. You identify that person and you spend money to get to get them to to um, to respond to you, to get their attention. And then over time, so that million dollars we, we we lost last year, we're about halfway back. Wow. We're just going through this process. And right. believe me, there are times, now back to the positivity, we look at the, we you know, we look, and by the way, we're this, we're a small group. So we're not looking for a thousand new clients. Right. Maybe 10, right? Yeah. And so we do it on, on Google Sheets. And we meet every Tuesday and Thursday and we, we look at that and say, well, oh, geez, really no action on this one. We really haven't heard from these people. And whatnot. But you keep doing it and you remain positive. Uh, yeah. right? And so, and if you just do the process and you and you did the right homework and they can buy what you sell, you've got the right person. Right. You're not just, you know, then uh, eventually they'll say, hey, can you help us out with this project? And that's what happens. Yeah. But all the while you have to remain, you have to trust your process. I'm not saying you don't ad- adapt or adjust, right? But you know, it, it's a good. It's you know, it's good to you know, and that's what I. It's also that's what I say in the book. This is like this is not an absolute, right? Right. These are the things that work for me. Pick and choose what you like, but most of them are most of the things are golden rule type deals, right? You know, how to say hello, right. proper send off, right. you know, how to well, follow. I think you bring up a great uh, point about trusting the process. It's something I see when I work with athletes or want to work with an athlete or I'll watch them play in a game and they'll be absolutely elite. And I will say, hey, you know, to their parents, have you thought about a recruitment video for, you know, Bob or, you know, Sally? And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, we've thought about it, you know, and then they, they know they need it. You know, and then I kind of plant the seed as to I'd be happy to help, you know, if they need a recruitment video, if they want to play college sports. And then sure enough, I keep showing up, whether I'm doing my broadcasting, whether I'm just there to watch the game, whether I'm watching another athlete recruiting, etc. And then, you know, by the time it's time, they know who to call. You know, and so I totally can appreciate what you're saying is it it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to, you know, foster the relationships, build the trust. Uh, that you know what you're doing and then people will want to work with you. And, and it sounds like by staying positive and doing the things you've talked about with, you know, all these skills that you can learn from these books. Um, it sounds like that's a, that's a winning recipe. So respect their decision-making process. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, it's not going to be in your time. Mm-hmm. Some will. Yeah. Some will. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, I used to always say, and this uh, now to uh, back to an, an athlete uh, metaphor, you know, hit some singles, yeah, doubles. You'll stumble over the home runs doing that, right? You know, yep. occasional <laughs> steal home, maybe you know, yeah, it's like, you, you know, the unicorn comes out. But yeah, that's the uh, that that's that's the deal. That's where you know, that's where that ninety day thought. Now after ninety, you know, you got to also make adjustments. Let's not. Let's not uh, let's not be be silly, you know. Uh, if it's, I mean, there's one client where I'm just I got to lead in, and it's a huge, it's it's a massive, massive opportunity. I said I'm not giving up. No. We're gonna we're gonna keep, and we're just gonna be nice. I sent them all my book, signed copies. Oh, hey, have you read the book yet? Well, I'm, and she took a picture of it. She's on a plane, getting up, taking off. Still have not got a request from her to to, to for for a quote or anything. Yeah. You know, I got, I, I got, a, I got a little something there, and they have to. If the, if she actually read the book and got to understand how I op, how we operate, I don't so, know why they would give us a shot. Right. Yeah. But, but you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. No, that's cool. Uh, let's talk about how people can get the book. Obviously, you got a website here, positiveactivity.net. 
Um, sounds like a great place to check out. What other places? I know you've got some social media handles as well. Yeah, so, um, well, they're, they're, it's available on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, um, and the uh, and they can check out the reviews. The reviews have been off the hook. Uh, I've really been... I've really been pleasantly surprised for you know a, a, a guy that was a, a C English student right yeah, yeah. and um, and so uh, a lot of editors you know okay. so a lot of, a lot of they've got some help yeah um, so it was uh, but yeah those are those are the two main places and then yeah. I guess it's 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 okay. another place in, it's in Walmart at Walmart.com you know it's all online right now okay yeah we'll also put the uh, link uh, to Amazon in the show notes so people can get that nice and easy so. Uh, that'll be good as well. And then obviously being on social media, you know, it's important, obviously, to be able to be out there. But I, I wanted to kind of also hear just hearing your final thoughts when it comes to social media. You know, that's how these kids are operating these days. And I think that hearing from you, maybe even just about the importance of, you know, a first impression, you know, these kids are building their brand by some of the stuff they're putting on social media. Uh, and I think it's really important that people stay positive. And, you know, as we talk about, you know, having a positive mindset, if you're posting negative content on social media, that's not going to help you. <laughs> no, no. So, no. They're, they're, everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. That's another good one. I hear that all the time. Everybody yeah. is watching. So, But I still encourage them to, to take the road less traveled. Um, I'll give you an example. Direct mail is up. Mm. Direct mail is up. Direct mail has a 4.4% um, uh, response rate. That's compared to 0.12. I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, who's reading an email? Right. Now, you put some dimension. So if, if let's say, for instance, someone's trying to get noticed by a particular coach. And it's what I did with my daughter. We, we had a list. And oh. we sent we sent them stuff. My 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 son, who's in, in who's in your more more in your business than in mine. Um, uh, I think he actually even uh, scouted you out and got me the got me the interview. Yeah, there um, you go. Yeah, and he's big into social and all that. He sent he we we make sure he's got promotional items and things to send. Now that not that, that doesn't mean these kids are going to go out and buy you know buy stuff, but I mean something different than what anybody else is doing. Set yourself apart, but don't rely that some coach is going to see you on TikTok. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's, you know, I mean, I am, the, you know, the 64 year old man yelling, get off my lawn. I mean, right, I'm not yeah. <laughs> right now it's like, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not going to lie, but I am knee deep in social media now with my son, my son doing it for me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and it's, and it's going well in the, in the, in the, uh, the message is resonating because it's a simple message. Yeah. Yep. You know, less well, is more. Uh, Yep. And speaking of social media, you're down in the Plymouth area. I, I would be reluctant if I didn't mention my two uh, Cape Cod athletes uh, who uh, would love to uh, listen to this podcast. And I'm sure they may even check out the book as well. Try and let them know about it. But uh, Katie Shanahan uh, and Lauren Knight, uh, they're two fantastic field hockey players from Cape Cod Division One athletes at Quinnipiac University. So if you get your alma mater, exactly. You got it. <laughs> connections, right? That's what yeah. we're talking about, connections and networking. And uh, that's a really cool way to be able to kind of wrap up this uh, episode is by talking about people you know, people you trust and uh, reaching out. And by the way, my dad was a bartender for quite some time. So I picked up, I think, a lot of those interpersonal skills uh, that he taught me as well. So tell them to be sure to thank everybody along the way. Personal handwritten notes. Yeah go a long way. Yep. I try to do the same thing as well. It's very important. And it's a lost art now. People don't do it anymore. You know, we do it all the time. Yeah. Every yep. order, I every order gets, a, gets some sort of promotional item and a handwritten note. And as a matter of fact, real, real uh, one last thing, one of our clients actually took a picture of it, sent it to us. The note that we had sent her yeah. says, you know, some days it's things like this that turn a day around. Wow. Yep. Cool. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. I love it. I got to check out your website for the promotional products too. So um, I'm big into the branding and everything else. You should see the shoes I have. That's the latest thing. I've got customized uh, shoes uh, that actually have pliable, my company brand on them. Uh, I raise awareness for women in sports uh, through those shoes. So I know what a promotional product and a brand can do when someone has an impression. So powerful, powerful stuff. 
Powerful stuff. So this has been awesome. This has been powerful in itself, uh, Neil. So thank you very much uh, for coming on the podcast and keep up the great work. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate you. All right. I am Greg Glenn. We're glad you can tune in. Stay pliable, my friends. Thanks for listening to the Athlete Brand Advisor Podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes from today's episode and catch up on recent episodes at pliablemarketing.com. We also encourage you to share topics and guest ideas by emailing our production staff at pliablemarketing at gmail.com. We love hearing from our loyal listeners and athletes who want to grow their brand. So jump in and be part of the podcast because that's how we roll.